Tony here. I hope you've had a wonderful week. I have been getting so hot this week and it's been raining a lot as well, hasn't it? Anyway, today we have some really fun stuff for you. We have some songs, some activities, and a, a story, and I think we've got some craft as well. I hope you have an awesome time and I will see you later. Bye. Hi families. I'm Katie and I am so happy to have church with you right now. I, I'm feeling a little hungry. You know, it's making me think of my favorite fruits. Watermelon, cherries, <gasps> pineapple. Mm. Tell me some of your favorite fruits. Oh, those all sound so yummy. I wanna make a fruit salad with all of those fruits. Now, let's learn our point together. Every day, I make choices that honor Jesus. Now say it with me, come on. Every day, I make choices that honor Jesus. Great, now it's time for our everyday song that talks about that. Stand up so you can sing and dance along. that you're joining us today. Today we're talking about the story of a man named Naaman who was healed of leprosy. Naaman was given an instruction from the prophet of God, Elisha, to be healed of his leprosy. But Naaman didn't really like the way he was told he would be healed. So he got pretty upset and stormed off without any intention of doing what Elisha said. Like Naaman, we have many times in our lives where we're told to do something. How are we going to respond? Will we react like Naaman or will we choose to make choices that honor Jesus? That's what we're saying today. Every day I make choices that honor Jesus. 
We're going to start things off by singing a song together, so go ahead and stand up. And let's sing this out as loud as you can. You see in me is Jesus 
sounded so good. Thanks for singing along with us. Now we're gonna take some time to watch a Bible story together. Like I said earlier today, the story is about Naaman being healed of his leprosy. So let's check it out. Hey friends, Watson here with a brand new segment I like to call Watson's 90s Puppet Theater. Now the 90s were a pretty dope time to be alive. People said things like booyah and as if. And the 90s were a time where any old person could wear bandanas, not just pirates and bikers. And everything was made out of jeans. It's like they had an overwhelming abundance of jeans. So much jeans that it had to be shirts and backpacks and hats. Hashtag so much jeans. But the 90s was more than just jeans. It was also a big time for puppets, such as myself, to get into acting. We did plays, we did movies, TV shows, and my personal favorite, Bible stories. In fact, we have a Bible story today from deep in the heart of the 90s about a guy named Naaman who had a terrible disease called leprosy. And there was no cure for leprosy. It was, as they say in the 90s, a wiggity whack. But this Naaman guy really wanted to be cured. So we talked to his old pal, the king. And the king sent him to the prophet Elisha. And that's where our 90s puppet theater picks up. So let me dust off this old VHS real quick and we'll watch this story together. Are you sure this is the place? Oh yes, my lord. This is the house of Elijah the prophet. Listen, my lord, someone is coming. You must be Elisha. This is my master, Naaman. He has come to be healed of leprosy. I'm not Elisha. I'm Gehazi, Elisha's servant. Well, where is this prophet Elijah? I want to see him. I have brought great treasure to pay him for healing me of leprosy. Elijah told me to tell you to go down to the Jordan River and dip into the water seven times. Your skin will be healed and the leprosy will be gone. What? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. I came all this way for nothing. Dip seven times in the Jordan River. Ha! Driver! Get us out of here. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Master, I beg you, reconsider, sir. Perhaps you should do what the prophet says. I thought that the prophet himself would come out of his house and pray to God for me. Oh, I expected him to lay his hands on the place where I have leprosy and make me well. Why couldn't I go back to Damascus and dip in the Abana River or the Far Par? Why? They're far better than that dirty old Jordan River. Please listen, Master. If the prophet had asked you to do something hard, wouldn't you have at least tried it? He's right, my lord. It is a simple thing to dip into the Jordan River. What could it hurt to do this? Very well. We will go to the Jordan River. Yeah! How many times did he say I should dip? You must dip seven times, my master. All right, here goes. Oh, hey, well, I don't see any changes. Six more dips, master. All right. Two. I'm gonna hit pause real quick. Uh, this is taking too long. We don't have time for all these dips. If you're gonna dip that slow, then you ain't gonna dip at all. So I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit here. It's supposed to fast forward fast forward, and that should be good right there. Okay, let's pick it up with dip number six. Take it away, Naaman. Six. Hey, there's nothing happening. The prophet said seven times, my master. Dip once more. All right, here goes. Whoa. Look, I'm clean. The leprosy's gone. That is great. It was so simple. All my master had to do was obey the word of the prophet of God. Oh, oh, oh. There is no God in all the earth but the God of Israel. Oh, snap. That story was all that in a bag of chips. Naaman was tripping, but his servants were all like, hey, maybe you should just dip into that yucky old river like that Elisha guy said. So Naaman did, and he was totally healed. That's awesome. 
Man, last time I dipped into a yucky river like that, I just got stuck in it. And I had to wait there for like three days until someone came and found me and I was all thirsty and hungry and they rescued me and I didn't get healed or anything. I just lost my shoes and ruined my pants. But hey, enough about me. Thanks for watching Watson's 90s Puppet Theater. That was awesome. And maybe they give it a minute. And that's all, folks. What a crazy story, guys. Nothing happened the first six times Naaman dipped under the water, but on the seventh and final time, he was completely healed. Our friend, Pastor Andrew, is gonna be talking to us a little bit more about our story right now, so let's take a look. Have you ever seen beautiful flowers before in a garden? Maybe your parents have a garden outside the house, or maybe you've seen plants at the zoo, or maybe you even got to grow your own plant at school. I have a plant here. So my question for you is this, how did this plant become so strong and so beautiful? Did it just suddenly appear like this one day? Well, no, it grew. It grew from a little seed, just like this one. A gardener planted a seed into good soil, and then the seed needed to be nurtured. It needed water and sunlight to grow. Did you know that when you join God's family, God plants seeds of the fruits of the Spirit in your heart? He does. But what are the fruits of the Spirit? You can find the whole list in Galatians 5, but here are a few examples. Things like love, joy, patience, gentleness, and self-control. It's kind of like your heart is a garden and God plants good seeds in it. He plants seeds of love, joy, patience, peace, and self-control into the garden of your heart. But what do the fruits of the Spirit need to grow? First and foremost, the fruits of the Spirit need their gardener. The good seeds that God planted need God to be their good gardener. Without God, those seeds will not grow. God is our good gardener who nurtures the seeds that he planted. We can be confident that God has begun to work in our lives and he will complete that work. Second, the seeds need water and sunlight to grow. When we choose to exercise our faith by making choices that honor Jesus, it's like the seeds in our heart are getting water and sunlight. Think about the story of Naaman. Naaman had leprosy and God gave him instruction through the prophet Elisha. So what should Naaman have done? He should have exercised his faith by obeying God with a good attitude. He should have practiced the fruit of the spirit of joy and self-control. So what do you do when God tells you to do something? What do you do when your parents ask you to clean up your toys or to clean your room or turn off your video game when you really don't want to? Or what do you do when you realize that you need to change the way that you talk about other people even though all your friends are doing it? Or what do you do when you are mean to your brother or sister and you know you need to apologize, even though it'll be really difficult to do. Do you obey God with a good attitude? Do you exercise your faith by choosing to be full of joy and self-control when you obey? When we choose to obey God with a good attitude, it's like those seeds in our heart are getting watered and they're getting stronger. Choosing to obey God with a good attitude is always the right choice, but it's not always the easiest choice to make. I want to encourage you with what 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says. You are tempted in the same way all other people are. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted any more than you can handle. But when you are tempted, God will give you a way out. He is our strength. And because of that, we can make choices every single day that honor Jesus. And those good seeds that God planted in our heart will grow to be full of good fruit. Pastor Andrew talked about how our heart is like a garden and God plants seeds that will grow into fruits. Not real fruits, but fruits like love and joy and peace that we find in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. I would encourage you to get out your Bible and read through the whole list of the fruits of the Spirit for yourself. Then talk with your parent or small group leader about which fruit of the Spirit you have the hardest time with and why. Once you've done that, take some time to pray together and ask God to help you grow that fruit of the Spirit in you so that you can make choices every day that honor Jesus. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Friends, I learned so much about the fruit of the Spirit. Let's learn a Bible verse that will help us too. I'll say it first. Ephesians 6, 1. Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. <laughs> now I'll say little parts and you can repeat them after me. You ready? Okay, Ephesians 6, 1. 
children. Obey your parents. Because you belong to the Lord. We belong to God and He'll help us listen and obey with a good attitude. That will help grow good fruit in our lives. I had a great time having church with you. I'm gonna leave you with some questions to talk about with your family. Now when they pop up on the screen, just pause the video and have a little chat. See you later. It's Anna here and today for our craft we're going to be trying some string painting So um, some people would like to use some different kinds of paints or different string maybe But this is kind of what the basic setup is and I'll just take you through it very quickly now So what you're going to need is you're going to need some paints uh, You're going to need um, a cup of water uh, You're going to need some scissors You're going to need some string And you're going to need a pretty big piece of paper or you're going to need two sheets of paper uh, so in order to do that, you can then fold it in half like this. This is what we want to be able to do. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut our string. And you're going to want a fairly long piece of string so it covers the page like so. So as you can see here, the string can be pulled out along there. And so I'm going to cut that there. And then I am now going to tie my string. And you may need a parent to help you with this if you're not comfortable cutting it or you can't seem to get the right knot. So I'm just doing a simple knot and tying my string like so. So now that I got my string like this, I am now gonna start soaking it in water. So you're gonna want to dip your, most of your string in the water and now you can dip different parts of your wet string into different colors of paint. So I'm going to do some yellow and then I'm going to do some red and then I'm going to do some pink. And you want the paint over different sections of your string. So that's the yellow section and then the red section is going to be slightly further down like so. So I'm just finishing up putting all the paint on my string like so. As you can see, I've got a fairly nice range of colors on there. And now I'm just gonna dip it back into the water very quickly just to keep it wet. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna transfer it and put it on one side of my page. And I am now going to just pull it out in different directions like so. And I'm just going to move it around, maybe untwist it a bit as well and we're gonna leave it like that. And now I'm going to close my page over it and hold my hand over the string like so. And now if you should have a little bit of string on the outside that you need to pull out. And then you're just gonna keep pulling it out like so. And then hopefully when we open up, we're gonna get a really kind of cool little pattern here. And so what you can do to further this is you can make it into some more petals, you can paint on some leaves, 
Um, but I just think it's something really cool. And you can do obviously different loops and different uh, colors. You can even do multiple strings as well. And anyway, that's it for the craft this week, guys. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Hey everyone, it's Anna here. And today we're doing another fitness challenge. So today we're gonna to do some toe taps. Um, so basically what this is gonna look like is it's slightly more of a balance challenge as well. And I'll just show you how to do one. So the first things first, you're gonna have both feet uh, straight ahead like so. And then you're gonna bring one foot out and then you do this. And in order to make it harder for yourself is you're gonna bend your knees while you're doing it. So you do tap, 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 tap. So one full uh, foot tap looks like this. So it's one, two, three, four. And then you go back to the starting position and do it again. And I want you to do that for 30 seconds on each leg. So it's the same thing on both sides, like so. One, two, three, four. And that's a full rotation. Let me know how you guys go. I'd love to see what you guys can do with it. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Hi everybody, I hope you've had an awesome time today. We can't wait to see you. We are really missing you, aren't we, Anna? Yeah. We really are. And we want to get together and hear about all of your adventures while you've been um, on the Circuit Breaker and in Phase 1 as well. Anyway, uh, and I also want to um, just encourage you, um, if it seems like a long time and you're running out of patience, just remember that God knows, God cares about you, and He sees you right where you are, and He loves you so much. Take care and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.